Hi, I'm Underbelly, and you suck at remixing. But now's your chance to change that, because I'm holding a remix contest with Splice for my new song, Road Trip. The contest has two parts. First, producers will create vocal-friendly arrangements of my song. You people will vote on the top 10 submissions, and from those, I'll pick what I think are the top three. The three winners will receive generous cash prizes. Next, vocalists will have a chance to rap, sing, or in Derek's case, sob over the three winning instrumentals. I'll pick one winner from those who will receive a very generous cash prize and the chance to collaborate on an original song with yours truly. Wowzers! For today's lesson, I'll show you how to put the stems into Ableton, and I'll share some tips on how to start crafting your very own vocal-friendly arrangement. Let's get started. Okay, so check it. Before we bring the stems into Ableton, let's go to our live preferences, go to record warp launch, and turn auto warp long samples off. Next, we'll switch over to the arrangement view by hitting tab, go to the folder with all the stems, hit command and control A to select them all, and click and drag them into the session, holding down command on Mac or control on PC to give each stem its own track. Wowzers. We'll hit H and then W on the right side to resize everything. Uh, click on I-O over on the bottom right corner to get rid of our ins and outs, and extend the track titles to the left so we can see them all. I'll also change the master BPM to 164. That's the BPM of the original. And then I'll highlight all the stems by hitting Command or Control A again, and give ourselves a little headroom. I'm going to turn all these down, say, minus 12. Okay, so we have the stems prepared. Now, how the heck do we fit vocals over this? Okay, many of you may not be blessed with such a beautiful voice as I have, in which case it might be smarter to bring in an existing vocal a cappella to structure our arrangement around. And what better place to find such an acapella than Splice? <laughs> so let's open up the Splice desktop app. We'll search acapella in Splice. And I have a very nice Splice sample pack called Intonations by Isla Isha. Uh, let's check out some of these acapellas here. Think fast. Think fast. Okay, well, listen to the lady. Don't dilly dally. Let's think fast. And copy this acapella over into our session here, hit Command T to create a new track, and paste it over at the beginning there. I guess let's just take a listen, see? Now the whole world just melts away. Oh. <laughs> no games like Sounds awful. Well, here's the reason why. First off, this acapella has not been warped uh, to the master BPM of our session. So let's double click on this, click on warp, and type in the original BPM of the acapella. Looks like that's 140 right there, and hit enter. I'm gonna solo out the acapella, turn on the metronome, see if it sounds all right. Can't find the words that I'm trying to say. Okay, that's pretty much in Can't time right there. Anyway. Okay, so we figured out the BPM. Now let's try figuring out, I don't know, what key this thing is in. Let's take a look at the acapella title there. You can see next to 140 BPM it says A, so I'm assuming that this is in the key of A major. And if we go to our stems folder here, it looks like we're in the key of C minor. Well, how do we turn something that's in A major over into C minor? It's impossible. Well, don't panic just yet because every major scale has a relative minor scale. So if I, Alicia is already in the key of A major, well, all we have to do is go down three half steps and we'll get the relative minor. In this case, F sharp minor. Now, because A major and F sharp minor have the exact same set of notes, whatever melody Isle Isha is singing in A major will also work over something just as well in the key of F sharp minor. Wowzers! So to get from F sharp to C minor, which is the key our song is in, all we have to do is just double click on the stem and put it up six semitones. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
Okay, let's take a listen to that, see how that feels with the mix. Oh, who invited Alvin and the chipmunks in the studio? Gosh! Okay, let's change the warping algorithm to complex, bro. Take another listen. Okay, so much better. Okay, now that the acapella is warped and put in key, let's we'll start structuring our arrangement around it. I'll bring it to the beginning of the session. I'll highlight all the stems here and then just hit zero to mute them. Okay, let's hear the acapella for a sec. Okay, seems like she's starting out with her verse there. So let's right click at the top, create a locator, call it verse one. And I want something pretty chill from the stems to establish the vibe of the track. So maybe let's check out this guitar stem, get some diddly diddlies in there. Okay, that's pretty nice. Okay, let me just highlight that little piece. Hit Command C to copy, create a new audio track underneath, and just paste it at the beginning there. See how it sounds with the vocal. Think fast, my heart rate starts to Fine. rise. Stand still, my mind getting paralyzed. Not bad. So much, I just can't take it in. What? What the? What the fuck? <sighs> okay, when I was making this song, I was being a pretentious asshole. And I made the chord progression 10 bars long. I mean, what kind of fucking idiot would do that? Everybody knows that every single chord progression ever is eight bars long. So let's highlight two bars out of this chord progression here on my guitar and just cut them and just nudge this little piece over to the left. See how that feels. Think fast, my heart rate starts to rise. Okay. Stand still, my mind getting paralyzed. So much, I just can't take it in. Okay, very close. Let's just nudge over that little piece right there and hear it again. So much better. All right, so let's highlight this nice eight bar chord progression and hit Command D a couple times to paste it throughout the section. All right. Okay, at measure nine, we're halfway through the verse. We wanna add a little something, something to raise the energy. So let's go back to the stems, maybe check out these electronic drums here. Take a listen. Okay, we got some bleep bloops. Uh, let's highlight these, Command C, create a new audio track, and paste them right at measure nine there, halfway through the verse. Okay, let's hear that transition. Solid. Okay, so here at measure 17, our Alicia is really going to the top of her range there. She's getting into Alvin and the Chipmunks territory again. So. I'm assuming this is the beginning of the pre-chorus. So let's right click, let's create a locator here. We'll call this pre-chorus. And here we want to add a little something, something to raise the energy further. So perhaps some booty bass. So let's go to our bass stem here, solo this one out. Okay, we got some booty bass, we can work with that. Let's highlight it, Command C, paste it underneath, drop it right at the beginning of the pre-chorus. It's here. Okay. All right. It's a little thin booty, but make it work. Okay, again, being a pretentious asshole here, so let's just uh, shorten this bass line because it's 10 bars long, as was the old chord progression. Let's cut that shit. Much better. Let's keep the electronic drums going. All right, 25, we're halfway through the pre-chorus. So perhaps let's go back to the stems. Maybe check out this beautiful intro arp here. Oh, some nice bleep bloop as well. So let's highlight all this shit. Uh, create a new audio track, paste it right there. Halfway through the pre-chorus, let's take a listen. Oh, Alicia's a little off there. I'm gonna nudge her a little bit to the right just by holding down Command. Much better. All right, right there, 33, I believe this is the chorus. So let's right click, add another locator, we'll call this chorus. And here we really want to drop the booty bass and the big drums. So let's go back to the yellow drum drum stem. Looks like we're getting a little crazy here a little uh, later in the track. Okay, boom, let's highlight this little piece. Drop it onto the electronic drums track, take a listen. 
Africa. Now to match these electronic drums, I want some even fatter booty bass underneath, perhaps an 808. So let's go to splice again. We'll type in 808 and see what we come up with here. All right. Okay, that's pretty damn fat. Now I want to be able to play this 808 like an instrument. So instead of just dropping it into an audio track, I'm going to create a new empty MIDI track here by hitting Command Shift T, hitting Command F, typing in simpler over in my search and double pressing enter, voila, there it is added to the track. Next, we'll go back into splice and click and drag this 808 over to where it says drop sample here. Wowzers. Now in terms of the rhythm of the 808, traditionally it follows the kick. So what we can do here is just highlight this little electronic drum stem here and hit convert drums to new MIDI track. Ableton will analyze the audio, try to spit out a MIDI version of the pattern here. So let's just take a listen and see how close it got. Okay, it's pretty damn close. Now we don't really need the hi-hats or the snares. I think we're missing a kick at the beginning. Maybe we'll also highlight all the kicks by hitting Command A and just drag up all the, the velocities here so it's nice and big booty every single time. But I think that's pretty good. All right. Now let's just highlight this kick pattern here and just paste it down over to the 808. Solo that out. Oh, pretty damn short. Let's hit Legato to extend these. We're kind of down in the wet farts territory of the low end, so let's hold down shift, press the up arrow key twice to bring it up two octaves. Okay, that's pretty nice. Let's hear that with the drums. I want it to be a little more punchy, so I'm going to turn down the sustain. Turn up the decay. Maybe you turn up the attack a bit as well to make room for the kick in the drums. Awesome. Now it's a little boring having the 808 play the exact same note over and over again. In traditional music, the bass generally plays the root note of whatever chord is on top. So let's try to find the chord progression of the song here. Maybe it's in my intro synth stem. Okay, here we go. Nice and pretty. Let's copy these down to my chorus. Create a new audio track here, paste them. Let's hear it in the mix. Oh. So super dissonant between the 808 and the chords. What we need to figure out is what are the root notes of these chords? How do we extract those and put them down to the 808 track? Well, let's do the same thing we did with the drums. Let's right click on the chorus track and hit convert harmony to new MIDI track. So Ableton will try its best guess at figuring out the chord progression here. And even if it's not perfect, uh, it doesn't really matter because all we really need is the lowest note of each chord. That's the root note. So let's take all this hoot nanny on top and just cut that shit. Maybe just shorten this one a little bit so there's less overlap. And then what I'm going to do is just highlight all these notes, hit Command C. I'm going to paste them over onto the 808 track, Command V. And really all I'm going to do here is just use them as a placeholder. So I'm going to hit zero to deactivate those notes, and then try and generally match the 808 to the overall contour of the, of the chord progression here. Let's take these Cs, put them down to G sharp to match what's going on down below, uh, down to A sharp there, and maybe bring these down to F for the last two bars. Okay, let's hear it in the mix. Maybe put all these notes up an octave by holding down Shift and pressing up again. Here we go. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so we got some fat booty, but I wish the chords were percussive like the 808 and the kick in the same way. So what we could do here is solo out the chords. I'm gonna hit Command F again. I'm gonna search for my auto filter here. I'm gonna lower the frequency cutoff, cut some of that high end out, and turn up the envelope. So what the envelope does is it turns the filter into sort of a wah pedal. Basically, when there's more volume, the filter opens. When there's less volume, it closes. So it creates sort of the wow, wow effect. Now, what would be really cool is if the filter opened whenever the kick hit instead of whenever the chords hit. So what we can do here is hit the little arrow next to auto filter, click on side chain, and we're going to get the audio from the drums to MIDI track. That's where my kick pattern was. 
Let's take a listen. So now you can hear it pumping away with the kick pattern. It sounds beautiful. Maybe just to smooth this out a bit, I'm gonna add some OTT and take out the low end. All right, turn down the envelope so it doesn't quite go as high. Let's hear it in the mix. Let's hear the transition from the previous section into the chorus. Uh, it's a little sudden. So here's what we're gonna do. Let's go to right before the chorus. We're gonna highlight this little piece and create a bit of a dropout, just to emphasize the vocal. Okay. Just to make that a little less sudden, I'm gonna add a kick right there at 32. Shorten that a bit. Okay, that's nice. And just to lead into the chorus a little bit more, what I'm gonna do is duplicate the intro sense. I'm gonna get rid of everything except for the first chord. So I'm gonna create a split by hitting Command E, deleting all that shit, taking this first chord, and I'm gonna hit R to reverse it, just to create a sort of lead in or fade into the chorus. And what we'll do is turn the side chain off, maybe raise the frequency cutoff air a bit, just so more of the chord gets let through. Let's take a listen. Okay. Let's try it one more time. Maybe I'll drag this over to the right to create a bit of a fade. Let's hear it one more time. Oh, so sick. Oh, wowzers. Sounds amazing. So check it, we managed to use a placeholder acapella to craft a vocal friendly arrangement for our song with a verse, pre-chorus, and chorus. Wowzers. Thanks for watching. You can download the stems and submit your remix using the links in the video description. Producers will have until November 5th to submit, whereas vocalists will have until November 18th to be considered. To stay updated on deadlines, voting, and more, be sure to join my Discord as well as Splices. I'm Underbelly. Good luck.